Hello, once again, Avon High School AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here, broadcasting live, uh, not from my classroom, but from my kitchen table. Um, I took the day off today, not feeling real good, so we thought we'd make some videos here for you to help you a little bit with machine rule. And in fact, in fact, I just clocked in at 101.7 degrees. So while I may be a little feverish, I know calculus has to go on, and hopefully um, in my fever delirium, I won't make too many mistakes. Um, if I do, please make sure you let me know. But we're going to take a look at section 2.4 in the Clarkson textbook, the chain rule. It's a very important uh, part of, uh, of the students who wrote in AP calculus, calculus in general, because it will open the door for the student to take uh, many, many different kinds of derivatives. So what we're going to do here, first of all, is take a look at a list, a list of things that one could take a derivative of very, very simply without the use of the chain rule. Things like y equal x squared plus 1, y equal to sine of x, y equal 3x plus 2, y equal to x plus tangent of x. Let's take a look at each one of these. They're very simple, straightforward derivatives where you would apply one of the basic rules that we've already talked about. But over here on the other side, we've got something completely different. We've got functions that are just a little bit more interesting, perhaps. And you know, there is a little bit of a, a correlation between what you would see in the left column versus what you would see in the right column. Yes, while you can take the derivative of y equal x squared plus 1 rather easily, if you throw a square root over the x squared plus 1, it changes that altogether. By multiplying your argument x by some other constant, like 6, y equal the sine of 6x becomes what is going to be a chain rule type of derivative. And of course, y equal 3x plus 2 raised to the fifth, all sorts of ways that one could take that derivative. The chain rule obviously would be the easiest to take. And of course, y equal x plus the tangent of x squared. It's the fact that we are taking the tangent of some variable raised to a power that's going to necessitate. So now that you've got a little bit of a taste about what would require the chain rule, let's take a look at some of the inner workings of this rule. I'm going to read this to you, and it's quite possible uh, it may not make a whole lot of sense the first time through. I think the chain rule is the type of concept in calculus that a student learns best by actually performing it on various examples. But the chain rule says if you have a function y that's a function f in terms of the variable u, it's going to be a differentiable function of u, and u equal g of x is going to be some other differential function of x. Then we're going to sort of, uh, well, for lack of a better term, fuse together those two ideas. We're going to look at the function f of g of x. We're going to plant this g of x function inside of this f function to create what is called a composite function. Now, I know you have studied composite functions from your algebra class, and that's really all the chain rule is about. It's about taking the derivative of these composite functions. And the way that you do that is to take the derivative twice. You would first of all take the derivative of, well, we could call it the y function, which is the outer function, and we multiply that with the derivative of the u function or the inner function. The reason why this is called the chain rule is because this multiplication symbol here sort of acts like the link between two pieces of chain. Now, another way to think of this chain rule in the bottom, the derivative of f of g of x with respect to x would first of all be the derivative of the f function. That's the outer function, once again, multiplied by the derivative of the g I know it's very difficult for you to sit and watch and understand what is this inner function that he's talking about? What is this outer function that he's talking about? I think that's where the examples come into play, and I think we'll shed a lot of light on this. So if we look at this next page, what we've got here is essentially a, a listing of four composite functions. These are four f of g of x's. Now, while example, so we're going to take each of these different composite functions, and we're going to sort of decompose them. So what we're going to do with part A, y equal 
1 over x plus 1. We have to choose what our inner function is going to be, what our u function is. And typically that u function is going to be something that perhaps is located uh, within parentheses. And I know sometimes that's not always given because if you look, at, in fact, at each of these four examples, there is no parentheses to be seen. But what I used to tell my students is that sometimes you can kind of think about some hidden parentheses. Yes, this x plus 1 is sort of grouped together, and you could think of that as, as being a quantity within the parentheses. And for that very reason, that would be your choice of u. Your u would be x plus 1. Now, if that is the case, if our u is the x plus 1, to figure out the y function, the outer function, that's typically going to be a little bit easier because you would just substitute this u in for the x plus 1, and your function y and your function u would be 1 over u. Take a look at part b, y equal to sine of 2x. Well, once again, you don't see any parentheses per se in the problem, but you could think of the 2x as being a quantity. In fact, those of you who use a graphing calculator might uh, think about how the sine of 2x would look after you type it in. It would have parentheses around it by default. So that's a good choice for your u. u is going to be 2 times x, which makes in this particular case y equal to the sine of u. Once again, in this example, we're not doing any calculus. We're just practicing taking apart these composite functions so that we can apply the chain rule eventually. So if you take a look at example 1c, I'm going to let you think for just a moment what the u equation would look like. We've got the square root of 3x squared minus x plus 1. That entire quantity underneath the radical is going to act as your u. then the y function would just be the square root of all of that. Now, part D sometimes gives students a little bit of trouble. Think of y equal to tangent squared. Think, well, gosh, where would the parentheses be here? Well, once again, like most calculators, most graphing calculators, you would have to type this in as the tangent of x all quantity squared. And so that sort of takes care of your parentheses right off the bat. So your u could equal tangent of x. And then the y function would simply be u squared. So that gives, gives you a, a pretty good sort of uh, practice of, of how to decompose a composite function. Now we're going to move into the actual uh, procedure for taking a derivative. And we've got y is equal to x squared plus 1 cubed. And there really, there truly is a variety of ways that you want to take this derivative. Uh, one of which is to actually expand the function out. Take x squared plus 1, multiply it by itself once, and one more time for a total of 3. Um, and I'm not a big fan of that. I think a lot of you watching this probably would agree. And certainly, as, as this power of 3 got even bigger and bigger, say to the 4th or 5th or 6th or 7th power, we certainly wouldn't want to, to go down that road. So the chain rule is definitely going to be a much better way to take care of this. And we will go ahead and, and decompose this function and uh, using some of the ideas from example 1. So we're going to select a u equation, and we're going to select a y equation. And all the while, we want to remember that the u equation is going to be in terms of x. So if you look through this, you can kind of look and see hmm, what would be a good choice for an inner function. Well, we come to the conclusion that it would be, yes, quantity in parentheses. So this one's a little bit more straightforward because you The y function would be something Back just a couple of slides here. We'll remember 
that one way to represent the chain rule is by this particular product here. Taking the derivative of your y with respect to u and multiplying it by the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, that truly is the same thing as this particular formula down here, but the way that I've set example two up, I think it's best that we use the top version of this chain rule. So I'm going to write that out here. I'm going to write dy dx equals du dx multiplied by dy du. And if you think about this, it does make some sense because the du's, oh, in a roundabout way, sort of do cancel. And you would have a dy on top and a dx on bottom, which is exactly what you're trying to find. So we continue to work with this problem, and we compute the fact that the derivative of u with respect to x is simply 2 times x. And the derivative of y with respect to u. Now, I know you don't take the derivative with respect to u very much, especially prior to you watching this video. But if you've never been exposed to the chain rule, this is a little different. But you would just think of u as your independent variable. Take the derivative like you normally would. And then, of course, you'd have 3u squared. Now it's a matter of just multiplying these two things together. You would multiply the 2x times the 3u squared. But not a very good way to leave your you can do a little bit of cleaning up with this by multiplying your 2x and your 3. And of course, we'll get 6x times x squared plus 1 and 1u squared. And that would be the answer to this chain rule. Now, in one of my future videos, I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a, a shortcut in performing this chain rule. But I'm going to allude, allude to that now. If we were to uh, x squared plus 1 cubed, I think maybe the easiest way to take the derivative of the chain rule is to think about the, the shortcut to the derivative, what we call the power rule. In other words, you would take this exponent, it would pop out in front as a 3, and then you'd have the quantity x squared plus 1 raised to the second. taken care of, you could go ahead and multiply the 3 and the 2x, that's the front and the back, to get your 6x, and drop your x squared plus 1 squared down, and you will notice, you will notice hopefully, that these indeed are the same. And what I've written there in blue definitely is a little quicker. It bypasses this u substitution, this y equal function in terms of u that I did before. And I think what will happen is that as soon as you start working some of the problems, homework over the chain rule, this method here will probably be very second nature to you, and that's how you'll be taking chain rules uh, the rest of your lives. Anyway, hopefully this helps. I'm going to go get some more cold medicine. Hopefully I'll feel better soon, and hopefully 